The investigation here is to test whether the performance of six amateur boxers A to F is affected by their level of hydration, which is given here as either E, U hydration, which is the normal state, or D, a state of dehydration. And this performance is measured by recording the number of punches the boxer is able to throw in six simulated rounds. And the six simulated rounds are divided into two bouts. Rounds one, two and three are in bout one, and rounds four, five and six are in bout two. The output variable in this case is punches, which is a frequency value, but because it is quite a high value, we can treat it as a continuous variable, and we will choose to test whether the level of hydration has an effect on the number of punches by using an ANOVA. The condition for using an ANOVA is for data that is normally distributed with an equality of variance between levels, and this is tested in a separate video. We will use the ANOVA, and we will perform this through the general linear model. The response variable is the number of punches, and the model we will have is the subject, the level of hydration, hydrat, the bout number, bout, and we will look for an interaction between hydrat and bout by entering hydrat times bout. Under comparisons, we, we could select post hoc tests, which are useful when we have more than two levels in the relevant factors. But in fact, we only have two levels of hydration, two levels of bout, so we will not use post hoc tests in this case. Under graphs, we can select plots of residuals, which enables us to test the conditions of normality and equality of variance, which we do in the separate video. But just for interest, in this video, we will select standardized and four in one, where we see four plots in one graph. Okay. Under factor plots, we will look for an interactions plot between the level of hydration and bout. Okay, so we will run the analysis. One of the first graphs we see is the interaction plot, which gives us an immediate visual impression of the data, which for the two bout levels, one and two, records the data linking together dehydration for the black line and the normal condition, euhydration, the dashed red line. Each data point here represents the mean of all the measurements made at that particular combination of bout number and hydration. And it appears that dehydrated subjects, the number of punches thrown decreases from bout one to bout two. But for those with normal hydration, the number of punches appears to increase. This suggests a possible interaction in which the effect of moving from bout one to bout two is different depending on the level of hydration of the subject. But we will need to test this within the ANOVA data. We also see this four in one plot for the residuals. These plots are considered in more detail in the subsequent video. However, we can see immediately that the residual values closely follow this diagonal line, which represents a normal distribution of data. Looking at the output ANOVA table, we can see the significance of the different factors, subject, hydrat, bout, and the interaction identified by the different p-values. We can see immediately that there is a significant difference between the different subjects, the different boxes, with the p-value close to zero. Similarly, there is an overall difference between the two levels of hydration given by the near zero p-value. But what is significant here is that we can also see that the interaction term between hydration and bout is also very significant with a p-value close to zero, which is consistent with the interaction between the two levels of hydration when moving between the bouts. On the face of it, the p-value of 0.151 for the bout factor 
suggests that bout is not a significant factor in this problem. However, we would still consider bout to be significant because it has significance through its interaction with the level of hydration.